is another video of the uh, Torn EB receiver and the uh, power supply and the fabrication of a cable to go between the external power supply and the receiver. Power supply plugs in this five pin connector that goes on the front of the receiver. Here you see the two plugs. That's what it looks like when it's all together receiver and power supply. On the inside of the receiver, you can see where I'm highlighting the uh, power connector. We have pin one, which is the two volt source for the filaments. Pin two, which is the ground. Pin four, which is the 80 volt source, which they call plus A. And pin five, which is the HV return or high voltage return. The 80 volt supply is returned on pin five. That's very important because they use the negative side of the high voltage supply through a 200 ohm resistor to ground in the radio to develop the bias voltage for the radio. So you do not hook the B minus directly to ground. Another drawing just showing the connection between the receiver, it's four wires, the inverter, and the two volt power battery that powers it. Let's look at the plug. We have this one all cleaned off. We'll go ahead and attach some of the wires to it. Trying to keep the wires the same color as the uh, inputs on the inverter. So the red and blue are your filament windings. Black wire will be the A minus wire. Go ahead and clean the iron. Use wire strippers to hold wires while you're doing things like tinning them and such. We'll go ahead and tin this wire. Get just a little bit of solder on it. Go over, heat the connector, put some solder on that. You really don't have to go crazy with solder. A little bit goes a long way. Put the wire in the connector. Give it a second to dry. And we'll see that it's all connected. After the wires are attached, I'm going to go ahead and apply some uh, heat shrink. See the little green pieces of heat shrink there. Kind of nice to make sure if anything that gets in the connector it can't short out one of the wires to the shell. The shell actually splits in two pieces. So we'll dress out the rest of the cable with a uh, Kevlar sleeve. And go ahead and put a wire tie around the end of the sleeve to keep it from pulling loose. And there is a grommet and a retaining nut on the connector. So the sleeve's attached now. I'm going to screw the retaining nut onto the connector. And although I'm using a crescent wrench, you really don't have to use a lot of torque with this. It's just really to make sure it doesn't come loose on its own and that it retains around the uh, shielding. On the other end of the cable, I've separated the wires into two groups. The white and black group are for the A plus and A minus. And the red and blue are for the two volts for the filament. And we'll go to the red and blue connectors on the power supply. I'm using crimp on connectors, but uh, in this case, uh, I really want to just crimp them. So what I was going to do is take and solder those connectors onto the end of the cable. And we go to the power supply. We'll match the blue wire to the blue lug. Red wire to the red lug. And on the banana plugs for high voltage, there's a black and a red one. The red one is the plus. 
and the black is the minus. Now we'll go ahead and hook up the two volts, the input to the inverter. That's hooked to the bench supply. The whole thing was intended to originally run off of a wet cell at two volts. And that's what it looks like when it's all together. We'll turn it on, make sure that our uh, two volts is reading good. And I'm using a signal generator on 3885 right now. So we'll turn the receiver on and do some initial testing. Uh, if we look at the A minus, which is about minus two or three volts, A plus should be around 80, 85 volts. And the plus for the filament should be two volts exactly. No more, no less. This is a little adapter I've made up. It uh, goes from the banana plug outputs on the uh, audio to a quarter-inch plug, uh, which makes it a lot easier to deal with. Oh, I'd forgotten that. That's right. Because I think I was like one of the only ones, if not the only one, that well, I could find. We're hooked to an antenna now, and uh, we're still on 3885. Cigarette lighter plug, you know. I even have one of those in the bone anchor shop. So you hear a couple people on the top of the cigarette lighter, and it's got the, the, the buttons on the front of it to, to choose which station you want it to play on. So that's an interesting point. Very good. Okay. Excellent. Just watch, you'll find out that it's actually the it's a little tricky using this being a regenerative receiver. There's no RF gain uh, control and there's uh, no AVC action. So a lot of times when you adjust gain, you have to play around with regeneration control. The level and rege regen control both kind of interact, so uh, it takes a little while to get used to using one of these. There's the uh, 80 meter CHU in Canada. meters turn the regeneration and gain up and the 40 meter band is right about at the end of the dial always a lot of CW activity up on 40 in there. See if we tune above or below that. audio filter on the radio but I have it switched out right now. Kind of helps with CW with uh, taking out the adjacent channels.
more digital. And that gives you a pretty good idea of how the receiver works with the uh, original 2-volt power supply. <laughs> 